so I I hope today to finish the the introduction to mobility and uh, and then start with the the proof of Borel uh, Rishon theorem the proof by Margulis. So uh, we mentioned uh, most of the GDP, all the GDP. Yeah. So basically, it's enough to assume uh, irreducibility in the SL2 factor, but let me, uh, let me state the following so theorem. Okay, let the the next simple legal not uh, locally isometric of it let uh, gamma one, gamma two, G, B, uh, let's say irreducible lattices. It's enough to assume that one of them is uh, irreducible in the SL2 factor. So you, you can assume less. You can assume that if G has some factor, uh, is homomorphic to SL2, then the projection to that factor is dense. And uh, if this is a weaker assumption, which is enough, but let me state it in this way. There are even more general versions, uh, but let uh, me say it this way. Uh, if uh, F from gamma 1 to gamma 2 is an isomorphism, if there is an isomorphism, uh, F, then there is an automorphism, a uh, sigma in the automorphism group G, such that a uh, sigma restricted to gamma one to any isomorphism between lattices extends. So in particular, the algebraic uh, nature of uh, that the algebraic uh, structure of gamma determine it. So if you want, uh, you can read it as gamma determines G mod gamma. The quotient space, which is a uh, is more structure. Uh, if you want gamma is more or less a fundamental group of that, uh, not precisely, but but uh, but. Uh, it determines that if you have, uh, <clears throat> of course, okay, what is the, uh, if you have gamma, of course, uh, you can conjugate it to G gamma G inverse. And, uh, and uh, the quotient space G mod is the same as the G mod uh, such a group. Uh, it's just the same space, but from a different point. So we just choose a, a different point. Uh, so, and, and basically, integration are the only automorphism. So, uh, uh, so if another remark is that uh, the automorphism group of G is almost the inner automorphism group of G. Uh, so, this is always fine. Uh, the, oh. This is actually the group of automorphism of the link in the exam, which is fine at the end. So, uh, so uh, there are only finitely many outer automorphisms. So, if you want two isomorphic lattices, are always conjugate. And to be precise, they'll conjugate inside a bigger group, but uh, it's almost true to say that they're conjugated inside the group itself. So, what group is this for us? I don't know. What? Oh, the outer uh, Just uh, all the two. All the two. So the only outer automorphism of SNN and R is taking G to uh, the inverse, inverse factor. And uh, <clears throat> so this is not the rigidity, it's a quite amazing theory. 
what's the most general case where this remark holds? Additions for JV that uh, What do you mean more generally? So the remark that all your markers in line are out of one. That's fine. But what do you mean most general? So for for semi simple liberal people, but then other groups. So uh, yeah, right. What other groups? Ah, okay. It's, yeah, I, I will not go to it. Yeah, it's, I don't know what, what how to answer. Yeah, we focus on the semi simple group. And for us, there is a symmetric space, uh, X, G, and K, the Riemannian symmetric space, so it's associated to, to, to G. It's a very nice Riemannian manifold, um, uh, which the uh, curvature between minus one and zero. And uh, it's symmetric space in the sense that at any point, there is a reflection to that point, an isometry that uh, uh, reflects through the point. So that's a Every every such a group corresponds to a symmetric space. Uh, in in previous courses, I talked mostly about these spaces. Uh, for instance, uh, H three is the symmetric space of S L two C, and uh, more generally, H N is the symmetric space of uh, P O N one. P O three one is S L two uh, over. over uh, so, and 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 uh, okay, plenty of symmetric spaces, and um, if gamma is a lattice uh, in G, it corresponds to a finite volume. It's uh, only which is X. Mod gamma, and if gamma is torsion free, it's a manifold. So, uh, so most of the GDP tell you that uh, that X manifolds are determined by the fundamental group. So, uh, this is an X orbifold, uh, and uh, and X mod gamma is a manifold. If and only if a uh, gamma has no torsion, it doesn't have non trivial elements of finite torsion. That's equivalent to the that's equivalent to the, the manifold and the uh, and uh, so, hey, can you say what happens in SL2R? Well, you know, uh, okay. But let me uh, let me first uh, say about SL2C. So, uh, how do you okay. use possibility? So, a corollary of uh, more rigidity. So it's not a color, it's just uh, restating mass rigidity uh, geometrically in a particular case uh, uh, to hyperbolic three manifold uh, M1, M2 of finite volume. are isometric if and only if uh, the fundamental group of M1 is isomorphic as a group, the fundamental group of M2. So we see if what is M1, M1 is uh, G is H3 mod gamma 1 and, and M2 is H3 mod gamma 2. And uh, yeah. gamma I embeds as lattices in, uh, in, in, in the group of isometries of H 
uh, three, which is SL2. And if they are isomorphic, most of it tell you that this isomorphism come from conjugation to the corresponding manifold. Uh, so it's just it's by one, right? Ah, and right. two. <laughs> and and this is for any three bigger than two, right? For any one. <laughs> <laughs> I should work three manifold. Any n for any three bigger than two. No, the most specific are two manifold. Uh, three manifold. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, specific. But, yeah. Three. No, but it's true for yeah. three, okay, also so, three so plus let's, four. No? So let's let's do it for uh, hyperbolic n manifold uh, with n bigger than two. Yes, uh, that's more general. And uh, you and then, need to fix n, right? I mean, if you have ah, okay, uh, one two dimensional, one no, four dimensional. It's the same n for both. No, no. no? Uh, for the if you want to if apply the theorem, what? If there is, if there is, then he knows the same. He does have to. Have... Oh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you, you can show, you can show. <laughs> it's easier to show that the three manifold cannot have the same group as four manifold. For instance, the notion like homological dimension, and the, there are some invariants that tell you that you cannot be a fundamental group. Of, yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, so it has to be the same. And actually, uh, there is a generalization I think by Gromov of this theorem that tells you that it's enough to assume that one of them is uh, uh, it's locally symmetric and the other is any in general uh, at the mouth uh, manifold. So, so there are some generalizations. Uh, I have a question. Uh, so, in, when you stated most of rigidity, you said not isomorphic to SL two R, but uh, that means you do allow it to be like isomorphic to SL two R cos SO two. A yes. compact group? Uh, compact, no. Ah, but you did. Ah, so it's without compact factors, you assume? Uh, so, yeah, what, what is the, yeah, yeah, what is the most, uh, so, so first, I, I do allow something like uh, the group uh, SL2, let's say Z. Uh, square root of two. Uh, if if you know that's in bed in a, as a lattice in SL two R uh, times SL two R. Maybe we'll discuss more this example later. Uh, we'll discuss arithmetic groups. So so I do allow such groups are also most of so strong unit. But uh, but I don't allow uh, um, uh, I don't allow like if you take a lattice uh, if you take the group. Um, S O, let's say two one, and cross S O three, and and then there are lattices gamma here, which are uh, which uh, in a sense are they're not called irreducible, but they're embedded diagonally in the sense that projects densely to the compact factor. And not to the ah, and yeah, not to the and discreetly here. Yeah. And discreetly, yeah. yeah. And this will be a surface group. And uh, and and such a group will not be most of which. Yeah. But then it's not irreducible. Right. What? But then it's not irreducible. No, it's not irreducible. So you have an example of an irreducible lattice that you that no. satisfy with the compact factor. Huh. You know, you, you cannot be irreducible if there is only one non-compact factor. No, mm -hmm. so I don't know, like. Do you really need to assume there are no compact factors if you assume gamma is irreducible? No, you don't need to assume. If it's enough to assume that you are irreducible in all the SL2 factors. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but this one is not. This one projects is pretty to SL2. So, so what happened in SL2? So SL2 R is more or less a right equal, but it's up to Something's up to index two, or something is the isometric group of a hyperbolic plane. Hyperbolic plane has several models. One of them, for instance, is upper half of space, and the, the group of two by two matrices acts on the upper half complex space, but by Mebius transformation, and, and there is a metric uh, which is preserved, and this is the hyperbolic metric uh, <coughs> minus one. And, and um, and so this is exactly the group of geometry of that. So <laughs> lattices in SL2 corresponds to finite volume uh, 
hypothesis hyperbolic hypothesis and let's say you either want to allow uh, OV fold which uh, was like allowing a ramified point or, or you will well, you know, only many fold it doesn't matter so what is the surface so the surface is something that we imagine like that so it's like uh, two dimensional it could be compact or it could be non-compact but then there should be some cast and uh, and it has a genus which is uh, in this case is two um if you know the classification of uh, orientable surfaces there's only one surface of genus zero only one surface of genus one and and uh, for any genus there is uh, there is exactly topologically one surface, compact surface, and all of them except these two, uh, except these two, all of them carries a uh, hyperbolic metric. You can always uh, um, uh, maybe it's called the uniformization theorem. So, so you can always put a hyperbolic metric on a closed surface of genus at least. And uh, here you can put a metric of curvature one. It's a standard metric that we are known as field. Here you can put a metric on curvature zero, which is what is drawn on the board. You like uh, R2 mod V2. Uh, and, and for any other surface, uh, you have uh, a metric of uh, quantum curvature minus one. And um, so, in a sense, that's uh, it's the hint that hyperbolic metrics are much more interesting than, than Euclidean and, and, and spherical metrics. They, they give you much richer uh, work to play with. And this is only, this is already in dimension two, it's becoming in a sense more interesting in higher dimension. In dimension three is the most, okay, in dimension three is like the most, uh, probably the most uh, rich uh, case. Uh, anyhow, in dimension two, you have this, and let's focus on one of them. Uh, there is what is called Teich Miller theory, which is a beautiful theory that uh, characterizes all these metrics. So it, it turns out that uh, there are plenty of metrics. On the same surface, uh, you can give many metrics. So, so what you do is uh, like uh, hence decomposition. Uh, here is the you cut the surface, you imagine it as, as, a, as two pens, a pair of pens, some people call it uh, three whole spheres, and, uh, and uh, this, okay. And now, uh, type me the theory tell you that uh, <coughs> for such a pens, there are plenty of hyperbolic metrics. So, so what will determine the hyperbolic metric? You have to determine uh, several parameters, like the length of that circle, uh, and the length of that one, and the length of that one, and also the distances between. And and for every such a such a, a let's say six parameters, there is a hyperbolic pair of pairs. You just construct one. Now, if you want to construct such a manifold, so take any pair of pens such that the length of this one is equal to the length of that one, and then you can glue them together. The length of that one is equal to that one. Yeah. So, so you can glue this together, and the length of uh, that one is equal to the length of that one, and then you can glue it. And for any such a choice, you will get a hyperbolic metric on this surface. So it shows that there are plenty of choice, there are plenty of hyperbolic metric on that surface. Now, each such a, when you say hyperbolic metric, you just mean that it's a quotient of the hyperbolic yeah. plane by some. Yes. Yeah. Hyperbolic metric, I mean a Riemannian metric of constant curvature of minus one, but it's equivalent to say that it's a quotient of and, and the the corollary of most of rigidity, so it's Isometric as a Riemannian metric, or yeah, the, metric. Like it, the category. Yeah. yeah, but also as metric space, it's the same. To be isometric as well. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. So, so there is an isometry, but here there won't be an isometry because you can imagine 
that uh, you can construct uh, one surface. Uh, you can construct one surface which is huge, huge diameter, for instance. Like uh, you can take a surface of diameter uh, 1,000, and then you can construct another surface which, uh, if you want, uh, as uh, some some close geodesy of land uh, one over one thousand. So they could they would be okay. Actually, this so this would be <laughs> actually to, to be to have large diameter is actually the same as to have a uh, very small geodesy. We force you, but okay to take take one with very large diameter and take another one with some bounded diameter, some smaller diameter. They cannot be isometric. So you see that you have the same fundamental group. Uh, the fundamental group here actually we understand very well. The fundamental group of the surface is always given by uh, a by four generators in one relation. That's a that's a presentation of the surface group of minus two. Uh, uh, presentation of surface group of genus N is similar. It's just a, you have two N generation and one relation, which is the same as the product of uh, All these groups, two, every two surfaces of the same genus are homeomorphic <laughs> as topological space. In particular, they have the same fundamental group, but they are not, as, not necessarily isometric. So you don't have most of it. Is this just because SL2 is not contractible? Sorry? Just because SL2 can't be universal covered. If I don't if SL2, if the group was a universal cover, so of course if I mod out and at least I get I get um you, we say these are hyperbolic uh, metrics. What we mean is H2 divided by some lattice. Yes. But in the other sense, we said that the lattice is a fundamental group. Ah yeah, the, the lattice is the fundamental group. Uh, gamma is the fundamental group. Uh, but not of uh, not of G mod gamma, but of G mod K mod gamma. In general, so, so th that's a general phenomena in Lie groups. So, so Lie groups, compact Lie groups are usually not contractible. Uh, right. So this is. I'm just wondering what why SL2 is a problem. Like, ah, no, no, that, no, no. It's it's not that. No, no, no. By the way, just a remark about what you say about contractibility. Uh, so if you want, for any Lie group, just say, just that, that's a fact. For any Lie group, there is a unique maximal compact. Uh, for any Lie group G with maximal compact, A, G mod K is contrasting. And it's semi simple Lego. No, okay. every theory, but after conjugation. Oh. Same. I didn't know, yeah, it, it, K, there is a unique maximal compact after conjugation, and G mod K is always contractible. So the topology of G, okay. there, is a, there is a contraction from G to, to K actually. Uh -huh. And so the, all, all the interesting topology of G itself is inside K. So if you want to know uh, if G is connected, look at K and ask yourself if it's K is connected. If G is uh, contractible, so, so for SL2, uh, for SL2R, uh, K is SO2, which is the circle group. So you know, in particular, I tell you that the fundamental group of SL2R is, is the circle group. But, that, but, that's, but that's some side remark. Uh, <laughs> When I think of lattices as a fundamental group, they are not fundamental. I I hold something because I want to I wanted to give some idea, but I want I want I hold something um, not precise when I spoke about G mod gamma. I said that gamma is a fundamental group. This is not true. gamma is not a fundamental group of G mod gamma. It's a fundamental group of G mod K. So so when you want to think of lattices as a fundamental group, you you need to look at, uh, at the local symmetric group. And uh, by the way, this is a very strong solution to the Borel conjecture. This, what's written here, is a very strong 
solution to a case, a particular case, of a famous conjecture from algebraic topology, the Borel conjecture. The Borel conjecture speak about more general um, manifold which are aspherical. So what is aspherical? So, so for manifold M, you have uh, the Pi one, which is the first homotopic group, but we also have Pi M, which is a higher dimensional homotopic group, which are in a sense, what's interesting is they're always commutative. Uh, the manifold is called aspherical if it has only pi one. So all the higher homotopy group are trivial. It's the same as saying that the universal cover are contractible. It's contractible. So, uh, so, uh, so homotopically, aspherical manifolds are determined by the fundamental group. So, so they, and Borel conjecture says that uh, they are not just hom up to homotopy, but determined by the fundamental group, that up to homeomorphism. But when conjecture that if you have two aspherical manifold, which are homotopically equivalent, then they are homeomorphic. And most of say that this is true, let's say for a hyperbolic manifold of dimension bigger than three, bigger than two. Uh, but more than that, they're not just homeomorphic, they are even uh, smoothly homomorphic. Deformorphic and they are even isometric. There is a unique hyperbolic structure uh, on 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 a, if a manifold admit uh, hyperbolic structure uh, and the manifold as I mentioned more than two, then the structure is unique. In dimension two, there are plenty that type middle theory, but in higher dimension, the structure is unique. That's strong rigidity, and and it's it's quite amazing. It's really quite remarkable theorem. Uh, and with plenty of applications. These are all uh, spherical manifolds? Sorry? These are all uh, spherical manifolds? Locally, yeah, locally symmetric spaces are always uh, of the form G mod K mod gamma, which uh, ah, uh, G mod K, I think X mod gamma, uh, well, X is G mod K, the symmetric space. Now, G mod K is, is always contractible. Yeah. So, so, so X is actually deformorphic to R uh, to the dimension. So, so, so symmetric spaces, topologically, they are not interesting. Metrically, they are, but topologically, it's just RD. Every symmetric space, so, so the hyperbolic plane is, uh, is like R2. Hyperbolic space is R3. So every symmetric space is it's, uh, it's, it's contractible. Is there a philosophical reason that SO2 is so flexible? Uh, um, yeah, uh, okay. I don't know how to answer that. So, so, <laughs> so. And I will say if I have anything to say about it. I mean, yeah. Oh, I, so, yeah, but. <clears throat> okay, I, I don't know how to answer, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, the truth is that there is a very huge dichotomy between SL2, which are, there is stack middle theory that allows you so much deformation, and higher uh, dimension, which are very, very rigid and become even more rigid uh, when you consider higher line, which I discuss in a minute when I mention strong uh, By the way, my plan was to speak one hour about most rigidity application, super rigidity, and, and then arithmeticity, and then have a break, and then uh, and then start the book of Mongolis to Bogari Chandra. Uh, but I think, I think, uh, okay, we go a bit slower. So, 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 but there is no, no reason to rush. So we'll do that probably next week. Or we, we uh, but we'll discuss the theorem.
Uh, so some application of morphology and so there are plenty, but uh, uh, I, I mentioned the uh, uh, I mentioned the one finite theorem uh, last time, and uh, we saw that there are only finitely many. So we call from one finite theorem. Uh, that one, and I can steal him. It lies that for any V, there are a uh, okay. It implies the following. So, so I call one time to steal him. And so let me state it. So, so. Let's write O n of v be the number of a uh, hyperbolic n manifold uh, of volume mostly. And those are for example. So in dimension two, this number is, is infinite. So, so so let's assume that n is at least uh, okay. So 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 one finite theorem uh, says that row n of b is finite, but the proof uh, if n is at least two. Yeah. So for n equals two, even if for a given genus, for a given volume, uh, continuously many deformation, for n equals three, you still have most rigidity, but you have countably many manifold of primary volume. Uh, but for n at least four, this is finite and got one uh, proof that without giving any uh, estimate of this number because uh, it's proof was by introducing a topology and, and showing that the set of all such manifold in with respect to uh, a clever topology is uh, compact and discrete. But uh, it gave no estimate. Now, if you attended uh, uh, my course uh, last year, uh, or last semester, maybe, well, when, when we did that, uh, we took the following theorem. Uh, we proved that uh, uh, there, are, there is a constant depending on D. Uh, equal to n such that uh, if gamma is oh, oh, oh. Such that, uh, if m is uh, hyperbolic and manifold. Volume uh, B, then uh, and then and this four, then the fundamental group of M admits a presentation. Uh, which generate a relation such that uh, the number of generators is at most C times V, the number of relations is also at most C times V, and the length, so 
you, you don't allow long relation. Then of each relation is three. Let's say more. So you have, you only have very short relations. So we show that there there are there is such a presentation. And it's not just for hyperbolic manifold, it's for any localism, it's for, for, for every fixed symmetric space, uh, which is not H2 and H3. And maybe there are two more. Uh... Okay. For, for almost every symmetric space, you can prove such a theorem. So we start in class. But now I will not go into that. Uh, um, I will not go into. Uh, this uh, the proof of this theorem. I will just say that uh, it is easy uh, to show the uh, remark the number of. Uh, of groups uh, with such presentations up to isomorphism is at most uh, V to some, let's say, other ones. C. We'll see. Uh, is a constant related to, to C, but uh, maybe C square. It's a okay. So so it's it's easy to to show. It's it's an easy exercise. I, I don't ask you to do it. You can look um, in my paper. So it's it's few lines and three lines to do that. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> okay, or you can do it yourself. So, so, so as a consequence, oh, Larry, for n is four, O n v, the number of hyperbolic thin manifold up to isometry is bounded by v to the c. Let's let call it. B. So that's the number of hyperbolic manifold, and you can also show that uh, this is tight, so you cannot get more smaller. So this is a quantitative uh, version of one theorem, uh, and, and uh, but it's, it uses, uh, of course, it relies very heavily on most of the units, telling that the, the the manifold is determined by its fundamental. Unit. So muscle unity is uh, plenty of application, and in our field, uh, we tend to to run these theorems and say that uh, muscle rigidity is stronger than local rigidity, uh, but weaker than super rigidity, which I'll discuss in a moment. But uh, but it's not true. First, it's not true that muscle rigidity is stronger than local rigidity. It, it, it's stronger. It is stronger, for, but it doesn't imply uh, local energy. So it's, it's, you need to work additionally. So, so in particular, for SL2C, you can see it. In SL2C, non-uniform lattices are strongly rigid, but not locally rigid. So, so you, you see that it's not implied. But moreover, super rigidity, which is a, it's like a much more, a, yeah, it's, it's much more amazing result, uh, but, uh, <laughs> which I will discuss now, but, and it implies more solidity when it, when it holds. But super rigidity doesn't hold, for instance, for S on more. So it doesn't hold for hyperbolic length. It holds for higher rank. For, uh, it holds in SLN, in, for N at least three, but it doesn't hold in S on more. So super rigidity, it's, it's a um, fantastic and extremely strong phenomenon uh, when it 
when it holds, but it doesn't hold uh, in cases that, that strong rigidity applies. And, um, and for many, many mathematicians, uh, hyperbolic manifolds are much more interesting than, than higher symmetric space. There are, there are plenty of uh, mathematicians in the world that, that care only about three dimensional hyperbolic manifolds. And uh, so for them, they can use most of it, but they, they care less about uh, super rigidity. Okay, so now uh, I want to present super rigidity, arithmeticity, and uh, and uh, and maybe say a bit about why super rigidity by arithmeticity. Uh, in particular, we discuss. Uh, I'll, I'll say what is Borel Richander theorem, and uh, and my plan for today uh, was. Uh, after the break to start the proof of Borel Richander, I don't think. Okay, we'll see. but let's start with the super rigidity. By the way, uh, there will be this uh, Yoram seminar uh, in a couple of weeks where uh, Uri is the main speaker, uh, but also Alex Fuhrman will give a talk, a colloquium talk or, or basic notion talk. Uh, about about this, about uh, rigidity, the, the introduction to rigidity, and also there is a uh, if you if uh, if you can find or if you can ask me, I have it um, the lecture notes of by uh, Mongolis for the Abel Prize. It's about uh, arithmeticity and it's called arithmeticity of the speech group, but it's about rigidity. It's it's really. Uh, wonderful uh, uh, notes. Uh, at least for me, it was good. I don't know if you are less familiar with the theory, if you, uh, but yeah, yeah. Let's uh, discuss super again. What is super <clears throat> So, uh, so this is the theorem. So let G be a semi simple of with no compass factor. Suppose the rank G, the real rank in the case, and the real rank, uh, uh, just example, the rank of uh, the rank of S and N is N minus one. Uh, of S O N one one. This is not rank. This is not higher rank than this. Uh, in general, the rank is the dimension of a maximal uh, R split toe, so maximal subgroup, which is. Diagonalize of it. So if you take the adjoint form and you you, you look at the maximal uh, diagonalizable sub. Uh, or if you look at a symmetric space, it's the dimension of the maximal uh, totally geodesic Euclidean subspace. So in the hyperbolic space, you can find lines, the geodesic lines, uh, but you cannot find planes, flat planes. So that's why the rank is one. Uh, in the symmetric space of SL3R, which is a five-dimensional space, uh, you can find flat planes, but not three-dimensional general space. So the rank of, of uh, SL3 is, is two. So that's the assumption. 
And that's the why the superiority theorem does not apply to hyperbolic space. In a sense, it does apply to, to things like H2 cross H. This has run to. So if you divide this by some irreducible lattice, okay, let me say that here. So let's gamma, now there is only one group, so G, B, and uh, uh, irreducible lattice. Let, let me state it uh, uh, like the used, usually state, so let H, uh, be uh, center free uh, so let's say um, simple uh, algebra group and a K, a local field. So K could be R, C, or QP, or finite extension of QP. And, and that's it. We're discussing the characteristic table now. <clears throat> and let F from gamma to this group H of K. You can think of H as again as SLN or PON, PSLN, PSLN over R or QT or whatever, B homomorphism. Then the homomorphism extends to G. So suppose F of gamma is unbounded, so its closure is not compact, and the risk it is. So you don't have, uh, but you, you can relax this assumption, uh, say, in, in, but let's suppose that, that's, then F extend to F tilde from G to H. Would you want to set a case out uh, in this I don't, I uh, intentionally don't want to assume that. Okay. You will see why. It doesn't follow? It follows. Some part of it yeah. Follows. It, it, yeah. It follows that if F is unbounded and the risky dense, then K must be R because you don't have continuous map so sends to a continuous and uh, by continuous uh, map from and you don't have map from real group to totally disconnected groups which are continuous. So, so in particular it will tell you that K uh, should be uh, R. Or C, no? Or C. Okay. Now uh, ROC, yeah, sometimes I don't distinguish between ROC because complex groups are also real groups. I twice the dimension. Uh, yes, but uh, you are the ROC. It's a final extension. And, uh, but it's, you don't want to assume that. Because no, for no, that, I meant just like, it's yeah. not whether they didn't like this. Yeah, but because no. for application, I will show you after the break that uh, this implies uh, arithmeticity theorem. So then you also want to consider the case that K is Piali. Part of the theorem says that any maps to a Piali group is bounded, the image is complex. 
So you, you want to, and by the way, so uh, historically, uh, Images compact and trivial. In the periodic, it doesn't have to be trivial. For instance, um, it doesn't have to be trivial. So, uh, so example, consider SL3Z is the lattice in SL3R for which the, the theorem applied because the value is true. And you have a map from SL3Z to SL3QP. Just send Z into QP, right? Uh, will be some prime. So the image will be dense in SL3ZP, which is a component, but will not be trivial. So, so uh, but, you, but you see that it, it will be... Now, there's a risky... The fact that the Zariski closure is simple is not a strong assumption. In fact, if you look in Margulis' book, it is another statement that this is always the case. Whenever you have a high rank, whenever you have a high rank lattice and you map it, you have a representation of it, the Zariski closure will always be the same thing. So you don't need to assume sure that, but then I, I wanted all the assumption that, that the Zariski closure is center free is crucial. Some, somehow, if you don't assume that, but then you need you need to assume. That. So that's why. He, so usually, that's how this theorem is stated. And um, yeah, and this is a, a truly remarkable theorem. Uh, and the main application. So there are many applications. Um, of course, it's it's like. A, a, so it depends what you call an application of that and what you call an application of other results we knew before, like most probability, but, but some arithmeticity is an application of that. And uh, also the fact about, uh, yeah, you understand all the representation theory of, of lattices. Because, any, because it's much easier to, to analyze the representation of uh, of big uh, books and uh, and this model is very good to tell you what it is like. And historically, uh, after Margulis proved spoke this, uh, Corlett proved the same TOM for some rank one groups uh, by completely different method with uh, more differential geometry, harmonic maps, uh, but he did it with the uh, real targets. And then Gomov and Shen uh, did the same, like Follett, also the same idea, the same uh, method, with uh, non archimedean like the adding targets. Which, uh, and then if you combine both work and the proof that I will show you, that I'm sorry, sorry a sketch of the proof that I will show you, superduty and plurality, you deduce that also in rank one. Uh, except in the real and complex hyperbolic cases, also lattices are arithmetic. So this will be some of the theme arithmeticity uh, of uh, this uh, Yoram seminar. This one. Uh, okay. So what are arithmetic groups? So that's. Uh, in a sense, this will be our topic for today, next time, and probably the time after that. Uh, so, um, Sorry? 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 Sorry?
I just don't... All, this is, for high rank, it's also modulis. Uh, when G itself is periodic, uh, it's also modulis for higher rank. Uh, actually, I don't know what's the case, what's the case for one to one periodic groups. Uh, no, rank one, one arithmetic groups, so I think it's, it's Yeah, but arithmetic are never rank one because you combine yeah. the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, arithmetic, sure, but, uh, but, uh, but then the rank is not one. Uh, yeah, okay. I, but, so, but just uh, what I had in mind is that if K is Piadi, then by what you said earlier, it's the, there are no yeah. All of them. So they just prove that you can extend it, but then once you can extend it, you realize that there are no yes. steps. Okay. Yeah, that's mean that uh, basically what the, the consequence is that if you have a map from a super rigid group to a periodic group, then the image is complex. So so uh, so here the image will be uh, <laughs> three zp or a dense subgroup in this system three zp. So, so if G now if G is a Q algebraic group, but still we need to say maybe we said this that SL three Z is the risk dense. It's just three Q. Sorry, we need to say that. In, in the examples, for example, that SL3Z is a risky dense in SL3 QB. Yes, but, uh, but, uh, no, if we, if we have but, uh, but for the consequence, you don't really need it because, uh, yeah, you can always take the Dirichlet closure. Right. And then you can divide by this solvable radical, which actually there is no in that case. And uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, you don't need for this corollary. Uh, so the corollary, what? Okay, immediate corollary is that uh, if gamma, let's say, is a high rank lattice. or super rigid lattice, a lattice in a higher rank, irreducible lattice in a higher rank uh, link group. High rank, we mean, we always mean a, a rank, you can call it higher. Uh, then, any uh, map from gamma to SL N mod UP uh, has compared and bounded image. By bounded, I mean that the closure is over. So that's 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 a corollary. Okay, there are some details to check because uh, because of this. Is, uh, what do we do if the image is not? Semi simple, not very dense, and blah blah blah, but, but uh, you can always reduce the case. So, uh, so that's one of the problems. <laughs> okay, let me just recall. So, what is an arithmetic group? So, so, so let's say, uh, let's say G be a new group. Uh, Oh, from G to GLNR uh, representation, uh, let's say faithful. Representation such that the uh, of G is Q algebraic group. Uh, Gamma, which is rho inverse of GLNZ, is arithmetic in G. 
that's an example of a reflex. Uh, that's a, that's a one thing. Another thing, I don't say the definition, I say a few things about the arithmetic group, which you can glue together to a definition. Uh, if gamma is arithmetic, gamma one is arithmetic, in G and gamma two is commensurable to gamma one, that means that the intersection of gamma one and gamma two is a finite index in each, then gamma two is arithmetic. That's the second uh, thing you want to allow. And the third thing, okay, and then, then we have a break. The third thing is, uh, um, is that uh, if let's say f from h to g is a subjective map, with compact kernel, and gamma in H is arithmetic, then you want to say that F of gamma in G is arithmetic. Okay, and from these three pieces, you can uh, glue them to write a definition of what is arithmetic. So that's the operation that you want to allow. And, uh, and then the fantastic theorem of Borel and Alexandra that uh, uh, shall we do in details is the following theorem. I think that uh, history will do justice if they will have the list Ziegel to the uh, list of authors. Although it's not a theorem by Ziegel, but Ziegel proved the arithmeticity of SLNZ, and, and more than that, he, he developed a reduction theory. And uh, their proof is that's basically reduction theory, and, and with Ziegel domains. So, uh, so, but okay, this is Borel Alexander Tune. He says that um, uh, arithmetic groups are like they have clearly they are discrete. It's much, it, it's easy to see the GL and Z is discrete, and therefore. All this operation preserves discreteness, also markedly proper kernel, and uh, so this operation preserves discreteness. Uh, the, the main theorem is that they have finite co volume. So. Same simply groups. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so let, let's, yeah, let, let's be precise. Yeah, yeah, let's be precise. Like magic group. Let's, let's be precise. So basically, what you want to show is that GZ is a lattice. Because if GZ is a lattice, then everything commensurable to, to a lattice is a lattice. And, uh, and this operation of uh, mark, subjective map with compact kernel are also preserving sweetness of final component. So basically, the statement is about GZ. And uh, statement is about GZ and and uh, the statement is about GZ and, and, and let me be more precise. 
So here is the Q one. Let G be a, a Q algebraic move. If G has no rational character, so no max defined, no no max to to the multiplicative group of the field which are defined over over Q. But in particular, if G is perfect, so if the the commutator is dense, uh, then G Z is the lattice in G R. That's the main theorem. Moreover, moreover, and G Z is uniform if and only if. Uh, it has it has no unipotent. This is actually easy, and this is if and only if G has no rational co-character. No maps of the multiplicative group into G. Which are defined over here. So let me, before the break, just give you an exercise. So that's, and we will prove this theorem. That's the main theorem, that's easy. Uh, that's the main theorem. Uh, let me just, uh, you, you see, arithmetic groups are much easier to deal with than general lattices uh, because you just deal with GZ. Uh, and for instance, let me give you. Uh, some exercise about the magnetic group. Suppose that G uh, Z is a non uniform lattice. In G, G for me, G is G out, right? Yeah. 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 Show that G and uniform. So it's and, and really, it's, it's a nice exercise to show that arithmetic not uniform lattices admits uniform. It's true that it's true much more general that any non uniform lattice that meets unipotent. This is the Kirchner and Morgulis theorem. And actually, Kirchner and Morgulis proved this theorem uh, as, as a step, I think. Uh, there was some, um, there was some plan, some, some program. Uh, introduced by Selberg and Gatetsky Shapiro of arithmeticity, and uh, one of the plans was to create unipotents and uh, in general lattices, uh, and uh, and that, that's what mm -hmm. that module is. So actually, here is another nice exercise. Let G be let's say a semi simple And gamma in G, a non uniform lattice. Uh, then gamma is arithmetic. If and only if. Uh, the set the, the Z span of log of all gamma 
גמא עם גמא יוניפוטנט, the span of the logarithm is a z lattice in the Lie algorithm. The gamma is sufficiently close to the identity, or no, no. For for a unipotent, you can always take a logarithm because a, a log what is the unipotent? Right. A unipotent is a metric of uh, of this form. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah. Let G be a let G be a semi simple let's say linear linear. So it's a subgroup of GLN. So it's a good question. So 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 G G is uh, is inside GLN. And, and then the logarithm, what is the logarithm of a unipotent? Uh, it's just, uh, it's given uh, the log of such a matrix is the sum of uh, minus one to the n over n, uh, uh, it's a finite sum. The polynomial because this x is unip is nilpotent. So so uh, so so yes, that's a, a cool exercise. I didn't know this fact recently. Um, let me give you another exercise just to demonstrate that lattice arithmetic groups are much easier to deal with than uh, than uh, general lattices. Uh, it's to prove Borel, to prove Borel density theorem. So, so exercise. All this exercise. So this okay. Yeah. These are all not completely trivial exercise. Uh, and and here, so the but they are nice exercise that I can give hint if you want. So here, I show that. Uh, um uh, G um, uh, show that uh, G of Z is the risky density. And hint G of Q is dense and uh, G of Q is contained in the commensurator of G of Z. But we didn't discuss the commensurator, right? Uh, the commensurator, okay. Uh, so that's a hint. Let me just give you a definition that you need here. The commensurator inside G of a group sub of gamma is the set of all G in G such that G gamma G inverse is commensurated to gamma, where two groups are called gamma one is commensurated to gamma two. This is uh, if and if um, gamma one over the intersection is finite, and for lattices you don't need both assumption, but in general you need to assume that uh, also the other one. So, so that's the definition of. Commensurability, that's the definition of commensurability group, the commensurator. And uh, if you have an arithmetic group, the commensurator is dense because it's contained G of Q. And uh, this helps to, to show that the group itself is the Ritzky dense, which is Borel density. So, so you see, this is Borel density theorem, this is Kajdan Margulis theorem. So, so many theorems which are classical for general access. Are easy exercise for arithmetic uh, group. 
Oh, well, not completely easy. You need some big, uh, you need to move some idea. But that's a, that's a thing. But in general, of course, it's much better to know that the lattice is arithmetic than we can do things with it. So, okay, let's have uh, now break until 10 to 12. And then I will uh, say a bit more about arithmetic group and uh, Margulis, uh, why Margulis super rigid implies that every super rigid group is arithmetic. Uh, and okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me say a slightly more general definition of an arithmetic group uh, than GZ. And so here the definition. So so let K be a certain real number field. It's a number field that all the Galois embeddings uh, are real. Uh, uh, there are number fields. <coughs> Number field is a finite extension of U. Uh, uh, which is contained in R? It, it, yeah, in particular, it's totally real. No, I mean, a number field is not a. Ah! Oh, no. Not necessarily. I mean, QI is a number field. But, uh, okay, also here you don't need to assume that, but let me assume that. Yeah, you, can, you can assume that. So let uh, O K be the ring of integer. Okay, so that's all, all the numbers uh, in K, which are uh, uh, algebraic over Z, so uh, or integral over Z, they, they solve uh, uh, Monique integral polynomial of Z. But that's a, uh, okay, we, we know from course in the algebra, structure, structure, and uh, <clears throat> let uh, G be a K algebra group. Then gamma, which is a G of uh, this ring, It's also called arithmetic. And it's just the pen in the previous case by well of stretching or whatever? Yeah, it is. So, uh, but I, I wanted to say it. So it looks a bit, it looks more general because we, before we just took K to be Q and OK is Z. And we said that GZ is an arithmetic group. And uh, now I allow any number field. So at the first moment, it looks uh, more uh, more uh, uh, more general. So, so why it looks more general? Because, for instance, uh, here is an example. Example. S L two, it's defined over Q, but it's also defined over Q square root of two. Z square root of two is arithmetic uh, according to this definition. But it's also a thing. But it also follows from the definition of arithmeticity we have already. 
Doesn't it also follow from the definition we had? Is that a Wait. Wait, yeah. It, so it's it, like a theorem, not a definition? There is a theorem, it's called the restriction of scala. Mm -hmm. so, so what is restriction of scala? So I will not, I will not describe it. it uh, you mean it's arithmetic in, in SL2R? Oh, that's uh, you that's can discuss abstractly the theory of arithmetic mm -hmm. groups, and then some groups are called arithmetic and other are not. So this one is called arithmetic because it satisfies the definition. It's not, it's not a discrete group in SL2R. It's not, an, it's not a lattice in a sense, but it is an arithmetic group according to this definition. And uh, what's, what's the importance of the K being totally real? Why, why SL2ZI is not uh, No, SL2ZI, I said it's not important, ah. but, uh, but it's good enough. In fact, as, as remarked, and I'm going to say, the section of scala will tell you that you don't even need to consider any K. Uh, so, if you, yeah, another example is take SL2 Z of I inside SL2 C. So this is actually arithmetic, but not according to that. Okay, but is it so what, what, what? Yeah, it's also, it's yeah. arithmetic. Yeah, it's so to have two different things, don't give them the same name. You want to tell this thing thing. All these things are the same. It's just different point of view. They are, they are, I, I call them by the same name because they're really the same. It's just different point of view. And also this one, you can realize that G is zero. So, so, so. I'm sorry, yeah, is it, a, what, why did you write totally real, even if it's yeah, not a yeah. uh, because for the proof of super rigidity is enough to consider totally real. Actually, <laughs> okay. No, I just want okay. It just you, you're right. You don't need it. Many times people say let's k be a totally real because it's some information that helps you sometimes, okay. and and it's enough to consider that. Thing. But uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, Okay, restriction of scalars is something that I will not discuss here. We discussed it in past courses, uh, uh, but I think most of you know it. Of there is a possibility of, of restriction of scalar, so so there is. Uh, there is an algebra, a Q algebraic group H, so it's an algebraic group defined over Q, and we denote H to be the restriction from a, uh, I don't remember, restriction number. Restriction corresponding to, to this extension of G such that H of Z is G of OK. So that's why. No, I show you, I'm not going to define it. I, I can, but uh, then. It will take the next uh, meeting. It, to do it systematically, it takes uh, at least one hour. Oh. Uh, I refer you to either the Tomokinch book, where it's very well described in the beginning of the book, or to the book by David E. Morris, or just to write a section of Scala in Wikipedia or whatever, I'm sure. sure. Uh, there is a technical procedure uh, by Ben. Uh, I took the restrictions. Well, restrictions, no. Okay, and uh, and that's that's it. And then this time, okay, actually, the primitive definition is not more general than the first. But here, you know, the what what is the arithmetic group? Not the arithmetic subgroup. Yes. Let me let, let me say a bit more. Okay. What is this? Uh, what is H of R? Scan. Uh, 
what is the real point of patient power. So here, I do want to assume that the case of it's it's more convenient to assume yeah. so so h of r is the product of the whole sigma in the galois group of k over q i think of the galois group as the set of all embedding of my number field in r for each such embedding i look at g sigma I, what is G sigma? I apply, so you know, G is, is a K algebraic group. So it's defined by polynomial with K coefficient. So it's K linear algebraic group in subgroup of G and N, which is at the zeros of some polynomial with scalars in K. Now I can apply this sigma to the polynomial and I get other polynomial. They define another group, which I call G sigma. And then I take the real point of that. And then it's, it's, it's a fact that the, if I do this veil restriction of scalar, uh, this is what will happen to G of all K, will become H of C. And, and H of R, it's that group. It's that group. It, in, in general, if G was a simple group, H would be a semi simple group. So for the particular example, for that example, H, there are two embedding of a, uh, there are two embedding of a, uh, of a, uh, the field Q square root of two in R. One is the standard embedding, which sends square root of two to itself, and one is that it to the Galois conjugate, which is minus square root of two. Uh, each of them give exactly the same root, but uh, they, do something else to this lattice. So, so H of R will be SL2 R cross SL2 R. So you see, this will be an algebraic group which has a Q structure, some Q structure, not the, not the, not, it's not the product, it's another Q structure, and the Q structure that comes from the position of R with respect to which the C point are exactly give you this group. So this will be an irreducible lattice. So in a sense, this group is, is a product, but the lattice is irreducible. So H is, is not a sign of a Q. No, is it? H will be a group which is defined over Q. So how do you define this H? Can you, can you explain? You, I, you keep, I told you I'm not going to describe the reflection of scalar. Okay, so now you have an example. In this case, it's simple to... Ah, what is, what is the Q structure? Yes, yeah. if you like. You're not the same. It's that It will confuse me. Yeah. Uh, read about reflection of scalar. I mean, it's, it's something uh, elementary and... and uh, it's it's uh, something important. Uh, I just wanted to to say this. Okay, so 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 uh, so so sometimes when you discuss an arithmetic group, you want to think of them in that way. Uh, and here it's a lattice. Here it will be discrete. This uh, this uh, SL two. Uh, <laughs> Uh, square root of two is embedded. Uh, you send the square root of two to, to plus minus. You see any element here, uh, like the, the element a plus b square root of two, which is an entry of, of a matrix, let's say, uh, will descend to itself uh, times the conjugate. So, so in, a, in a similar way, you, you know that this square root of two. Is, is dense in R, and if you take the other Galois embedding, it's also dense, but if you take the, the diagonal, which one, you, you look at both embedding simultaneously, you get a lattice in R square, which project density to, to both factors. So, so, so similar thing happens. <laughs> Let me give another example again, without, saying without booming anything, I just describe you the situation uh, and 
Actually, there is a nice talk by Gil. Gil gave once uh, a lecture about the fiction of scholars in, in the El Gedi, and I think it's recorded. So you can find it in, in our website. Uh, and, and she will tell you the how to complete the details of what I'm describing. So, so another example. Uh, is take uh, the quadratic form x squared plus y squared plus um, squared to z squared, call it q, and <laughs> now my group g, b algebraic group, so the field k again is, is z squared plus 2, and my group will be uh, the group which preserve this form. So all matrices which preserve this form. So do you know what I mean? Or should I? Oh, you all know what, 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 what I mean. And, and this, this will be FO. Maybe Q is not G negative. Also the rational, uh, for it to uh, side. And and uh, and, uh, and now uh, this is G, and and now I look at gamma to be G of of the of the ring of integer which is Z square root of two. So actually, it will be a dense subgroup of this compact. This is a compact group because this is actually isomorphic to SO3. You know, this every two quadratic form uh, of the same signature. Uh, what? Of R is isomorphic. What? Yes, G of R is isomorphic to, to SO3. So, so yes. Uh, G of R, the morphic this open group, and this uh, countable group will be dense inside. Uh, and by the way, if you do exactly what I do, but instead of uh, three, you take five variables, then you will get a dense subgroup in SO5, which for the same reason that I'm going to explain now, you will deduce that it has capital property T. And the fact that SO5 admits a dense subgroup with Kashtan property T, it's what allowed Margulis to solve the, the uh, I think, Banach Zemich problem, um, which was simultaneously was solved by Sullivan um, about. Uh, yeah, okay, something we discussed in, in the course about, uh, yeah, which countably additive measure uh, you have with the sphere, which are around the after isometry to show that it's only the Levain measure. And so if you have a subgroup, a dense subgroup with property P, uh, then you can see. And so in the group of isometry of the fourth sphere you have because of such a person. In the group of isometries of the tree sphere, you don't have. That's another thing. So it's a big problem. The part of the very problem is more complicated. But anyhow, so this example, going back to this example, you have gamma. Now, what will be H? H, in our case, will be uh, SO psi plus SO the Galois conjugate of psi. Now, what is the Galois conjugate? So this, this is a, over R, it is SO3, and this over R, it will be SO2. Again, if, if I take the, the real point, uh, I get SO3 times SO2. So this is compact, so we started with something compact, but now we get something non-compact, which is actually uh, this group is, in what we have another name, it's just SL2R. 
you know, you, 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 this is the most standard the way to write the phrasometries of the hyperbolic plane, SO21. If you think of the uh, hyperboloid model, you have the signature to, to one uh, uh, Lorentzian form and, 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 uh, and the group for Dodge is SO21. Another way to see this isomorphism is just take the adjoint representation of SO2 out. Okay, so you, you get a three dimensional representation because SO3 is, is three dimensional. But uh, and the form that you preserve is a terminal of the choice. Uh, yeah, the terminal of the it is the determinant which is a graphic form of signature to one on the real group. So, anyhow, this is another group, uh, another formula, and another way to write the same group. Excuse me. I thought you were raising something on the class. Ah. Just the, the equation H of Z is it's not equal, it's isomorphic to G. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and here, what you get here is that this group. So the consequence of this association of scalar procedure will be that this uh, G of this gamma, this gamma will be H of Z, which is a lattice in SO21 uh, cos SO3, a lattice. So this will be by Borel Arishandra, it will be a lattice. Now, if we now mod out the compact group and just think of it embedding here, it will still be a lattice because when we divide by compact group, it, it doesn't destroy its thickness and of course it doesn't destroy finite volume, so it's still a lattice. Now, you can prove that this lattice is uniform. Why? Because it, it cannot have a unipotent. Because if it has the unipotent, you will see the fact that it's a matrix embedded here and here, almost the same. It just, if you know it embedded here, you know it embedded here, it's just a Galois conjugate. So if, if you have a unipotent here, it will also be a unipotent here. But in copper group, you don't have a unipotent. So this lattice is, is a lattice with no unipotent. It, it's a, it's a, it's a co compass lattice. So you have a co compass lattice in SL2R, in, in, in SO21. What we know what are these co compass lattices? These are exactly the surface groups, exactly fundamental group of hyperbolic surfaces. So this implies that up to finite index. Up to, up to taking finite index to, to kill the torsion, uh, we get, again, if you get lost now, if you never saw this before, you must get lost. I mean, it's just, I tell it to people who know what is the section of scalar, it's, when it's not the first time they see it. But I want to mention uh, that if up to finite index, gamma is a surface group. <laughs> I don't need finite index because uh, for quantum? To, to avoid torsion. Uh, if you allow or withhold a surface group, then you don't need. But if you want, if you take finite index, you can also kill the torsion. And now you see it's quite amazing. You start with something completely. It seems what can we say about this group? It seems like it's very okay. It gives you um, determine exactly what it is arithmetically, but. When I'm going to but uh, now we know it's a it's a one one related group. We know exactly a presentation of this group. With uh, it's a surface group. You know we know what it is just by by this possible. So 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 you see this possible, this this uh, trick uh, of a section of scalar, which is very which is very elementary in a sense. It is very valuable. It helps us to tell information about groups which look uh, mysterious. And it helped uh, people like Paul Ruiz and Sullivan to, to solve uh, some general, some, some well-known conjecture by a very, uh, in, in a very easy way.
So, so that's about restriction of scale out. And now I have 15 minutes. Yes. Now, now I this. Uh, let me save this uh, 15 minutes to tell you, and, and, and this is a proof that I intended to explain for Alexander today. I even wrote down the proof by Morgulis and I intended to explain it, but I will do it the next time. It should have been done like a month ago, but we broke so slow. Uh, Today, I want to explain why super agility is not just about the system. Yeah. Why simple agility? I, I will do, so let, I will explain it briefly, so, but you will see you, you, it's good to see the proof without focusing into the details. Mm -hmm. The details are not hard. So so let G be a simple proof. Good to see me there. Good to see conjecture. Uh, yes. Yeah, so. so Okay, the Q1 is the point. Q1? Yes, so, so let gamma in S so it's arithmetic in the sense that there is some rational divide group H uh, and the surjective map from H R to, to G, such that H G goes to gamma after all to something when you go. And the, the kernel is gamma. Okay. And uh, I want to use super rigidity, uh, but we also discuss local rigidity, then let's use local rigidity. Well, uh, by Selman, local rigidity. So that's first step. By local rigidity, we may assume okay. uh, gamma contains in G of uh, Cuba. Even Q power. Yeah. Right, you remember how we did it. Like uh, small deformation and then use operability to find it. So this using the lemma that uh, that is proved by the implicit function. Now but I, I already use I already use the local rigidity. <laughs> uh, <coughs> now that's heavy heavy stuff, but also the local unit is, is, is the consequence of super unit. The other thing that I use is a final generation by finite generation. So that is just a final generation. This is another classical keyword. We saw a proof of it in, in, in previous courses. Um, geometric proof or ordinary proof case by case analysis. Uh, 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 we can assume that gamma is actually inside G of K for some number of K number of So uh, so we have both uh, both uh, reduce. Now I thought this is crucial for the proof. 
But a couple of years ago, uh, Venk, I think Venkat Ramana explained me that you can actually hold the supergenic title like medicinally without uh, final damage. Okay. But, uh, okay, the standard proof uses that as well. Um, okay. <laughs> now, I kind of do a restriction of scala, like, um, So, so we know K is the number field, and so to consider all completion of K. So we know there is an embedding of K into R. For every sigma in the group. And there is also the embedding uh, of K in the Piani groups. For every P. Or maybe for every Yeah, there are also Piani uh, uh, embedding. So, so this gives you an, a map from gamma into uh, the product um, ah, more than that. Gamma is not just inside K. In fact, gamma is contained more than that in, uh, in O, K, S, for K is a number field and S a finite set of uh, finite places. Of prime. So K and QP, I think, also finite. Yes. Yeah. Finite. So, so no, because you have a ring, if, so, so the entries of the, of uh, G is linear, I assume G is linear. So, so the entries of each matrix, uh, the entries of all the matrices in gamma, I look at the ring they generate, uh, it's a finely generated ring. Every finely generated sub ring of a number field is contained in such a, in, in such a ring, right? So gamma is inside OKS. Okay, don't ask too much question because I want to do it in five minutes, and in any case, I don't do details. So, 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 so this is embedded inside the product of uh, of uh, G of K over all completion. Uh, G of K and V. Now, uh, for, uh, for a V not in S, the image is in the compact group G of O uh, K. This is the comparable. So there are only finitely many S's to consider. Now, by super rigidity, by the corollary of super rigidity, uh, this is the first case, uh, the first place where I use super rigidity, and you see that I need it, super rigidity with non archimedean term. By super rigidity, Uh, the image gamma is uh, bounded in every finite place. In every finite place. Also for those in S. Now, since S is finite set, 
since S is finite. Uh, implies yeah, as in the finite set uh, up to finite index the image is inside G of O K for every uh, finite <laughs> for every finite place the image in, is inside the ring of uh, of integers. Okay, I, I assume somehow I assume you all know what a uh, local field, uh, uh, of local field completion, and uh, so on. Okay. Why is this true in particular at real places? So far, I speak only about the fine cases. Oh, that's okay. So far, I speak only about. The finite places. And we know there are no match free from G of R to G of T here, something. No, no, yeah. Because of that, the image must be bounded. Because of that, it's originally the image. So this implies this implies that gamma uh, um, is inside H of Z. Well, H, okay, H is a figure of color. I don't tell you exactly what it is, but H is the product of uh, KV, the product of all V infinite, which is like the product of the Y in the So now, the fact that in all finite places you are in the periodic, in the periodic integer means you, that you are integer. Okay, I, I do it really fast. Uh, so now it's enough to consider the finite places, the infinite places. For every infinite, now I claim uh, the, the, the final step, I claim that uh, we claim that beside uh, uh, the the first embedding, the trivial embedding, which uh, which uh, correspond to 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 the, the completion, the standard completion, uh, beside the trivial embedding, uh, all infinite or other must be compact. And then if we know that one of them is non-compact, if all the other is compact, then it's exactly give you the description of, uh, of gamma as, as a arithmetic group. Because gamma is, is, is the HZ of that group. This is, this, the first factor give you G and all the other give you compact factors. What is tri what is trivial embedding? It's uh... what is the trivial embedding? I mean, <laughs> gamma. I started with gamma inside G, and G was a uh, G was uh, let's say G of R. Uh -huh. So this this gives you one embedding. Okay. And and then I take all the Galois conjugates. So I, so this one is not compact, and I assume here that G is simple, but I claim that all the other must be compact. And this is also follow from superjudicial. Why? Because if you assume that one of them is non-compact, uh, okay, the, the, here you have to walk a bit, but uh, it's not, not out there. So, so you need to show, I think you can use the fact that G is unipotent then. You don't need the fact that gamma, you just that G is unipotent to show that if one of them is not, is not, Compact, then by super rigidity, you get uh, this extends to homomorphism from G to this factor. And, and then you use this homomorphism to show you, you restrict it again to, to gamma or to the enteries of gamma. 
and and you show that it gives you it extends to isomorphism between the complete and it tells you that the the, the this two completion are the same so so it's not different factors yes yeah, so, so again so this is also okay I did it very briefly but that's all the steps so so if you write it formally it's one of two pages uh, with all the details so you start with gamma inside G inside S and PL, which is a lattice. By local rigidity, you can assume that it's inside a number field. Uh, since it's finitely generated, it's a, a number field, and also inside the ring of S integer. Then you look at all the periodic valuation, all the fin finite valuation. Most of them are already compact, they're already the ring of integer. And finitely many, maybe not, but they're still bounded. So if you go to binary index, they are already also the integer. Now you deduce that you are inside the integer points of of of, uh, of, the, of the group, which is the product of fine of infinite places. And now you consider each of them, and you say you show that all of them except the first one uh, must be compact because again you can use super rigidity. Otherwise. And, that, and that's a, okay, I wanted to say it without focusing on the detail because uh, that's giving you the structure of the proof. Uh, the proof is written with full details in many places, including in my notes, my lecture notes uh, that we were following for a while, uh, I give basically this proof on, on less than one page, uh, but you can find more details, uh, explanation in many books, uh, in Zimmer, for instance. So yeah. you, you want to say that the lattice is arithmetic, but what we're saying that it's contained in A to C. Ah, so yes, yeah. it's contained, it's right, it's contained in, yes. You could have already said it's arithmetic because it's contained in all. Yeah, it's numbers. contained, but since it's a lattice, it must be a finite index. Yeah, okay. yeah it's contained in, yeah. It's contained in H, H of Z. And and the H is a group with only one non-compact factor, and all the other compact. Uh, yes. Okay, so that was a, a bit bright, but uh, but uh, you see this uh, rigidity theory is uh, extremely powerful. There are plenty of uh, application, and uh, this is like the three most classical theorems: local rigidity, uh, most rigidity, and, and Morgulis local rigidity. Uh, and I tried to explain some application of each. Uh, by the way, another application of super rigidity is is, uh, is is for representation theory. Like you, you, you know, the, you tell you what are the representation of gamma. Now, uh, all this work by, for instance, work, the work by Neil Avni and Rami uh, about counting representations. It's all based on super rigidity because. Uh, they know that any representation of gamma, they count how many representation you have of S, L, and Z points. So any representation is either a maps to a finite group, S, L, and Z would be, or it's a representation of S, L, and R, which you, you understand well. So, uh, so, so also that it relies on, on super rigidity. So, so uh, there are plenty of application of these three classical theorems, and there are more classical rigidity theorems. There are other, like, uh, like I like stuke zimmer theorem, for instance, as some of you know, it's also a, a very beautiful application that, okay, so the theorem of rigidity is, is very strong um, theory. Now, we finish with the introduction to rigidity, uh, and, what uh, we will do now is uh, we start with the uh, uh, systematic proof, uh, which now I'll do all the details uh, because uh, I think this proof is not uh, enough well known. The proof of Borel Alexandra theorem um, by Margulis. And you will see that uh, it gives you some finiteness, it gives you some very nice uh, criterion to say when something is finite. So, um, and in terms of uh, random work. Okay, we'll, we'll get to it. Okay, I'm going to ask you to ask you to ask you to ask you to 
הפרשה הראשונה, 